We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this breaking news. Stephanie and Kaylee are standing by at the National Acquisition Symposium with the latest in the definitions we need to use when we assign ratings to our performance evaluations. Ladies, what is the latest on the ground? Thanks, Kevin. As you can see, behind me the festivities are starting to really gain momentum. There are a multitude of vendors trying to gain insight into what the government seeks in contractors. The noise level is increasing, so let's take it to the conference hall where Stephanie is standing by to fill us in on what she is hearing. We just heard from those exiting the CPARS conference that there are definitions that we must use when applying a rating to our evaluations. For a contractor to earn an exceptional rating, their performance must not only meet contractual requirements but also exceed a major contract requirement or many requirements, resulting in a benefit to the government with few minor problems for which corrective actions taken by the contractor were highly effective. For example, you are rating the performance of a contract for aircraft engines. The weight of those engines has been an ongoing issue. The contractor engineered a new manufacturing process for those engines using lighter weight materials, and as a result, those engines were able to make the aircraft fly farther and faster using less fuel, resulting in the aircraft being able to perform more effectively. This is a case where the contractor has exceeded a major contract requirement with an innovative solution, and therefore an exceptional rating is justified. To justify an exceptional rating, we must identify multiple significant events and state how they were a benefit to the government. A singular benefit, however, could be of such magnitude that it constitutes an exceptional rating. In addition, there should have been no significant weaknesses identified during the performance period. The government is not necessarily expecting perfect contractor performance. However, in order to achieve an exceptional rating, problems should have been few and minor, and the contractor should have implemented highly effective corrective actions. It's important to remember that the decision of whether to exceed a contract requirement in order to achieve an exceptional rating is the contractor's choice. At no time should the government be requesting out-of-scope work or asking the contractor to perform additional tasks without payment. Doing so is a serious violation of contracting regulations and could result in a contract claim. The government is only allowed to require performance in accordance with those requirements stated in the contract. For a very good rating, contractor performance must meet contractual requirements and exceed some to the government's benefit, with some minor problems for which corrective actions taken by the contractor were effective. It's important to remember that in order to justify a very good rating, you must be able to identify the benefit to the government. For example, you're rating the performance of a contract where one of the key personnel left the contractor during a critical period of contract performance, causing a work stoppage. However, the contractor was able to quickly hire and train another qualified individual, so that performance resumed promptly, before any schedule or quality impacts occurred. For a satisfactory rating, the contractor must meet the requirements and be able to satisfactorily take corrective actions for minor problems. Any major problems must be recoverable and without impact to the contract or order, and no significant weaknesses can be identified. It's important to note that a contractor will not be given a rating lower than satisfactory for not performing beyond the requirements of the contract or order. For example, you are rating the performance of a contract for computers. The computers were delivered to government on the correct day, they were inspected by the government and determined to be the correct models with the correct software, and the contractor submitted an accurate and timely invoice. In this case, the contractor neither exceeded nor failed to fulfill the contract requirements, and so a rating of satisfactory is appropriate. That all sounds good. I realize most of our contractors do perform well, but how do we handle a CPAR when the performance is less than satisfactory? Great question. Kevin, as we all know there are times when the performance does not meet the requirements. We have two ratings for these circumstances. Marginal and unsatisfactory. A marginal rating indicates that the contractor did not meet some of the contract requirements, and the contractor did not yet identify corrective actions, or their proposed corrective actions were only marginally effective or not fully implemented, resulting in a negative impact to the government. For example, you're rating the performance of a contract that ran behind schedule but was delivered on time. 
The contractor took corrective actions, but those corrective actions were only marginally effective or not fully implemented, such as when a contractor provided training to its employees to reduce the number of safety violations. The number of safety violations were reduced, but the number of safety violations still occurred at an unacceptable level, indicating that the corrective action was only marginally effective. In this case, a rating of marginal is justified because the contractor had significant trouble overcoming an event, resulting in a contractual deficiency. An unsatisfactory rating is justified when contractor performance does not meet most of the contractual requirement and recovery is not likely in a timely manner. For example, you're rating the performance of a contract for the replacement of a roof on a federal office building. A welder is working on the roof and used a torch too close to the building's ceiling, thus setting the roof on fire and causing the building to become uninhabitable for a significant period of time. This resulted in the government having to lease space in a private office building while repairs were made. The government had to pay to move its equipment and employees into the new facility, and operations were significantly disrupted during the relocation period. A rating of unsatisfactory in the quality evaluation area would be appropriate because the contractor failed to follow appropriate safety standards, resulting in a major negative impact to the government. An unsatisfactory rating should be supported by referencing the actions taken by the government to notify the contractor of the deficiencies. With an unsatisfactory rating, it's important to remember it must be justified by specifically describing which requirements were not met and the associated impact to the government. In such cases, it is particularly important to have documentation, such as cure notices, show cause notices, and written communications with the contractor in order to provide solid justification for the rating. Kevin, back to you. Those ratings are extremely important to our source selection teams. Another thing to remember is, when a large business has a small business subcontracting plan, you'll need to identify and evaluate the benefits of a small business subcontracting effort. Remember to refer to the CPARS website at cpars.gov if you have any further questions.